Welcome back to the vlog everyone. It has been a couple of months that I have not made any videos, the last one being the SEMA show, but I am here to give you guys a very big update, so I hope you guys are ready. My reason for being absent in the past couple of months is, you know, here in Canada, during the winter, it's cold, there's lots of snow, we mostly hibernate. No, I'm kidding. I've actually been uh, having fun with my uh, old school Polaris Indie Touring 600cc. Um, but uh, I haven't been getting much done, but I have now been working pretty hardcore for the past two weeks on my new project, which is what you're gonna be seeing today. And I'm so stoked to show you this. Uh, wait, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Now before I unveil my new project, most of you guys know that I used to have an S14 Kuki. I ended up selling it for the down payment on my house. And uh, it was pretty much a little break from drifting that I knew I was gonna take for a couple of years. But I definitely knew I would be building another another drift car because I miss drifting too much. I, I, I do have the S13 convertible, but that's like a pretty decently clean car and it's K powered so like you could still have some fun but not as much fun as my over 400 wheel horsepower SR used to be. So this summer uh, like every summer we have been going to the DMCC events with Dave Briggs. Uh, I've been uh, his spotter and crewing for him for three years now since Miro uh, stopped competing. And uh, we got to talking and everything and he was like, yo, would it be so cool if you were like back into drifting, back in competing, like we could pit together and everything. I, I could spot for him like usual and he would love to spot for me. So we were like, you know, just floating the idea, just start joking around. But things seemed to sort of like fell into place. And uh, I guess this is where I could unveil my new project. You guys ready? Drum roll. Drum roll. And here it is. My new drift car for the 2019 season. Do any of you recognize this car? I'm for, I can guarantee you that some of you have already seen this car in competition before. So let me show it to you a bit longer. And then you have to guess. Write it in the comments of whose car you think it is. So let's give a quick walk around of the vehicle before I get into details. Oh. Oh. Shout out to Overdose. So does anybody know whose car this is? No? Maybe? Let's cue a clip of this car back in the day. second competition car. Uh, his first car was actually became my red S14, my old one. And his second chassis that he did compete in uh, FD Pro-Am is this guy. Uh, it actually, it's funny because Dave sold the chassis to Francis Doyon who drifts in the MCC 
and the car actually ended up bouncing around to a couple of people before landing back in my hands. So I'm actually really, really, really happy that uh, I ended up with it. I know Dave is really happy that uh, I keep on reviving his old chassis. Maybe I'll get the SR car. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I got it actually um, almost at the beginning of the summer. No, at the beginning of the summer, I picked it up from a, from a buddy who really just had to get rid of it. He was stuck. He was in a pickle and uh, I went to pick it up from his house and I just let it sit in my backyard for like uh, the whole summer. And uh, like I said, me and Dave, we were like just bouncing some ideas around, talking about getting back into competition, me being in Pro-Am and Dave in Pro. And uh, at the last event that we were at in St. Croix, I, he really stoked me up, like pumped me up enough to uh, to, to, to make the, the leap of faith. So um, rolled the car into my garage. Uh, worked on it a bit just before winter started. So what I did was uh, sandblasted the whole rear end because there was a lot of rust because it had been sitting for so long. So I sent a lot of surface rust. Um, sandblasted the rear, painted the rear, sandblasted some spots inside the car because the car was horrible on the inside. Like I, I'll, I'll try and find some pictures of what it looked like before and this is what it looks like now, so check it out. Well, the floors are a bit dirty, but not too bad. But I gotta say, the paint job really came out well. I really prepped it nicely and everything. Even painted the inside of the doors, repainted the cage, and the car is looking mighty fine, I must say. So I did that. Um, next, next we went with the engine bay. We, uh, we being me. Hold on, I will put the hood up and be right back. Ah, there you go. So I actually painted this um, last week. I this too was pretty nasty. I had to like sand it all down, uh, prep it all, and I I painted it before the weekend actually really came out nice I'm happy nice uh, glossy finish um, and that's about it I tore out this car had all stock uh, stock arms and everything so I threw on my old Driftworks uh, lower control arms that uh, well, there was already some uh, Megan uh, tension rods I'm not sure if this is gonna be like the permanent setup uh, this is pretty much me putting them on since I had it laying around, but I would love to uh, put a powered by Max, a part shop Max uh, angle kit in the front. So, so for now it's going to be this. Um, I still have my old knuckles from my Red S14, the AV Fab knuckles. Uh, I'm going to be throwing them on today, actually. Other than that, uh, we will be uh, running some PBM coilovers from uh, Dave and uh, that's it for the engine bay right now on to the interior um, for now I put my old Sparco sprints from my red s14 I'm not sure if that's gonna be the final uh, bucket seat that I'm gonna be running but it'll do the job for now um, the dash I don't know if you guys realize there's something weird going on but uh, Ardo had done it um, on Dave's third chassis, he cut the dash right here. And I actually find that it's really clean. It gives it a lot of room. It's not too stuffed with the, the dash going down to the tunnel. And uh, so I did it and I'm actually really, really happy with the result. Other thing that I made, I made this this weekend. Look at, to the, look at how that fit. Look at the curve, how nice it is. It's actually a piece of Lexan that I had laying around that I cut out a piece I made some tabs for it to clip up here in the dash there's like some holes so I made the tabs folded them down so it locks into the place in the dash I heated the Lexan multiple times and f like molded it to the dash so it had the same shape as the dash uh, then I uh, made all my holes and installed, oh sorry, no, uh, wrapped it. I wrapped it with some uh, carbon vinyl and uh, put everything in. This is, it's temporary for now because as you can see the gauges are not wired yet.
But uh, yeah, so for now we're going to be running uh, water temperature, oil pressure, obviously wideband for air fuel. And uh, obviously the switches, we're going to have a cutoff switch on the outside. We're going to have ignition, um, fuel pump, fans, headlights and taillights, and wipers. For now I think those are the essentials. And uh, worst case, if I ever have to add anything, uh, we have some room up here. Uh, as you can see, the previous owner was about to run a dog box, so the tunnel was made bigger. So if ever I switch to a dog box or anything else, well, there's the room. And uh, I think for now that does the, uh, the tour on the... Oh, you know what, actually? I'm going to show you guys something really cool. I actually got this idea from Ardo's brother who had hidden something underneath, underneath the, uh, the airbag cover. It's not fully pushed in, but check this out. Oh, not easy with one hand. But you take the airbag cover off and... We have the fuse box. And yes, if anybody realizes, these welds are the most horrible welds in the world. I uh, welded it with my flux welder and I ran out of wire and whatever. It, it's really sturdy, obviously the fuse box weighs like a quarter of a pound, so. But yeah, so I have the fuse box here. I started to do the, uh, the wiring of the rear end of the vehicle. Um, I, in the loom that's here, we have uh, the brake lights and we have the fuel pump. So obviously here is the ground for the relay for the fuel pump relay, which the battery is gonna be here, so the relay is gonna be hardwired to the battery. And then from the relay up here, ignore this red wire by the way, the loom goes up. By the way, I used riv nuts everywhere in the chassis so it could be nice and uh, clean and uh, solid. And the wiring comes up here into the rear. Here are the tail lights of the vehicle. The brake lights actually. And the fuel pump wires are coming here. Uh, obviously that'll be done shortly. Now the reason why there's the this red wire that's just chilling on its own is actually because I wired the tail light, the brake lights in the tail lights and I totally forgot to wire the uh, the nighttime lights in the taillights. So uh, that's why I just quickly passed the wire, but the loom that I have here is not big enough to add an extra wire. So I went to get new loom, and I'm actually, hopefully if I have time, I'm gonna do that today. I'm gonna take out, remove the loom, add this wire inside, bring it out to the back. And uh, I think uh, that's it for today for the interior. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. What engine are you gonna be running? Good question. Initially, when I always said I was going to build a new drift car, I would have loved to have an LS. I know, oh my god, everybody runs an LS. Yeah, but it's so simple. It's so simple, it's easy, um, parts are cheap, and uh, it makes good torque. It's like easy to drift. I know it's a bit boring. I'd love to have a high revving V8, but that's a whole different game. But uh, anyways, that idea aside, I actually ended up putting my hands on Jeffrey's old SR20. So it's actually right here, sitting in the back of the garage, waiting to be put in. Right now, the way it is, Jeffrey had pulled the head, he decked the head, put a new head gasket, put ARP head studs, we did the dual guide conversion. Um, he put all brand new seals from front to back. So this engine is really in, like, in good shape right now. Turbo-wise, it has a T28, um, nothing spectacular, and, uh, you know, just regular stuff. Obviously, that would make the car not really competitive, uh, or not competitive at all. It's nowadays, back in the days, you used to be able to drift with 300 horsepower and be competitive, but now uh, I was watching Pro-Am last year in DMCC, you have... 350Zs with LSs, you have BMWs with LSs, you have two J cars, one, K, one J cars, so 
it's not going to cut it. I know it's not all about the power. You also have the alignment of the car and uh, everything comes into play. But I would love to have at least 400 horsepower, wheel horsepower. Like between 375 and 400 wheel. So I'm going through a couple of ideas. Either I run, I try and do like sort of the same setup that I used to have in the red car, which is a Garrett GTX 3071R. 740cc injectors and uh, was a top mount obviously and I was running at 20 pounds I was making 402 wheel on a Mustang Dyna which is very good and it had an amazing power band it made really good power I was I was always satisfied with the power that car was making I think either I would run the GTX 30 or I was maybe thinking if I could afford it uh, run the G25. The new Garrett G25 is really impressive. Um, most of you that are watching me right now probably have already watched Adam LZ. Adam is now running the G25 in his uh, S13. Um, he has a built S uh, SR20 with the G25 on Ignite uh, Ethanol. On a, It wasn't a Mustang Dino, but I think he made like in the 500 rear wheel range, which is a bit too much for me but if you guys have a chance go check out his S13 on the dyno the thing the G25 the responsiveness is mind-boggling it the car has like no lag it is ridiculous so I would really 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 love to run a G25 depends if uh, my wallet can afford it <laughs> so um, yeah so there's that option or maybe just a GTX 28 or a GTX 29 GTX 29 yeah did you guys know that exists I my one of my best buds Jeffrey just bought an S13 right hand drive a SIL 80 with a built SR20 with a GTX 29 when I saw the post I was sure it was a typo I was like no that doesn't exist the GTX 29 no it does exist check it out GTX 29 so it would probably be in, in about that range of uh, turbos and hopefully making, you know, between, like I said, 375 and 400 uh, wheel horsepower, rear wheel, ho rear wheel horsepower, I'd be uh, pretty content with uh, that power, and I, I'm sure I could make it work, make the car competitive. So, um, I think I'll leave you guys on that. I'm going to do a couple of things. I got my, uh, the bearings pressed on to, pressed on, I installed the bearings on my old uh, knuckles, like I said, that were modified by uh, AV Fab, Ardo Van Lien. We're going to install that, install new uh, tie rod ends, uh, put some old coilovers back on just so I can put it back on its wheels. I don't, that's another thing, I need to find wheels. Uh, me and Dave are trying to find a sponsor for uh, wheels, so if anybody is down, if anybody knows somebody, hit me up or hit Dave Briggs up, uh, we'd, we'd love to talk. So um, leave you guys on that and let's cut right now to me installing the knuckles and hubs. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to install the modified knuckles. We have some SPL tie rod ends and uh, we're just going to install some old coilovers until we get the new uh, Part Shop Mac coilovers. So uh, let's check it out. <laughs> said these are temporary coilovers this is not what's going on in the car I have to go to Dave's in Toronto and pick up a bunch of parts including some new PBM coilovers so temporary There you have it, the temporary setup for right now. Um, like I said, I will have new coilovers, obviously new brakes and pads, rotors and pads. Um, those outer tie rod ends will do the job for the beginning of the season. I have spares, so that's cool. And uh, what I did forget to say is this uh, front uh, cross member 
has the uh, steering rack relocation. So the steering rack is pushed forward. So now that there is an angle kit, the, um, the tie rods and the tie rod ends are not binding outwards. Uh, sorry, binding inwards. Because usually the steering rack is further back. Now it's pushed in, so it's a nice straight line with the modified knuckles. And uh, hopefully this will give, uh, obviously it's not going to give uh, angle as if there was a Wise Fab or uh, Part Shop Max. But um, it's, a, it's a good starting point for any grassroots guy or uh, anybody that uh, wants to have fun. You guys want to see with, with a wheel what kind of angle this thing can get. Let's check it out. All right, guys, here it is, the, uh, the angle where the wheel is mounted, just a temporary wheel. Uh, and let's see uh, how much angle this thing can get. Wow. I'm actually impressed. It's pretty decent. Now, obviously, this is not a wine, so... The rack might be a little too in or uh, the tie rod end might be a little too in or too out. So this might actually not be the final angle of this kit. But uh gotta say that's pretty decent for just some uh cut and welded knuckles. Let's see the other side, it's probably gonna be less on this side. Yeah. Yeah, see this so the tie rod has to come a bit out, but it's still not that bad. Not that bad, but hopefully I will get uh, some uh, Powered by Max and we'll be rocking way more angle than this. So, all right, off to the other side. I won't show you guys since you already saw this side and it's just be boring to see it a second time, so. All right, see you later. And there we have it. The front end's all together. Just mocked up quickly. Obviously this thing's gonna need an alignment. Uh, at the end, but uh, we should be able to go get a decent amount of uh, angle with this setup and uh, should be lots of fun. So um, I think we are going to call it a night. Um, going to end on this. I shall be going to Florida on Thursday. Thursday night I am flying out to Fort Lauderdale to go meet up with my parents. Uh, spending a couple of days down there. Then we are heading to Orlando. Uh, my sister, my brother-in-law, and my nieces are coming to join us. We're going to be going to Disney, see Mickey Mouse, and uh, there's going to be another surprise. But I'm going to let you guys wonder what it is a bit longer. Just keep in mind, Florida, Orlando, stay tuned. See you guys next episode. Ciao. Hey guys, one last thing. I totally forgot to show you that I mounted my new RCI fuel cell. Um, Dave used to have a ATL, if I'm not mistaken, that bolts from the top with a bladder inside. I decided to go a bit more budget for now since uh, I'm not sure what I, if I will be keeping it like this because I would one day love to run a uh, rear rad and have the fuel cell mounted more um, like in the bottom of the back glass area. So, uh, bought this, uh, inexpensive unit for now and, uh, it'll do the job more than fine. So what I did is I had some, uh, some stainless steel brackets made, which, uh, like for now they're temporary bolted. Um, I will be putting some lock washers and some Loctite obviously, and as an extra safety precaution, um, I'm going to have Ardo weld some tabs. I'm not sure if I'll have them weld them like here on each side, but it uh, can never be too safe. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's the fuel cell uh, setup.